June 22nd. Ok, vamos a practicar, vamos a practicar de qué hablamos hoy. Hoy vamos a practicar con el vocabulario de, del hotel, del hotel. Uh, vamos a ver el vídeo otra vez porque es posible que ustedes tengan preguntas. It is possible that you guys have questions about that video. And it always helps as a warm up to see this uh, video first because it does go a little bit fast, but um, she goes through a lot of very general information, which is really, really helpful. And um, this hotel video bit is, is a little deviation because you guys had that suggestion and it was a good one um, to go through some of this vocabulary and how we use it. And then we'll kind of marry or blend into that, marry it with the grammar portion of how do we construct a sentence that makes sense to ask questions or give information when you're at, um, say, you know, la recepción, the, the lobby desk, talking with somebody, uh, you know, in a hotel, um, all that kind of thing, and take any questions you might have. Está bien. Va, uh, voy a compartir, uh, voy a compartirles con ustedes. I'm going to share with you guys this little video again. So if you watched it, it doesn't hurt to see it a second or third time because you always hear something a little bit different each time um, you watch and have that experience. Uh, vamos a ver. Okay. Hola, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Sí, diga. Quiero ver si tiene cuartos disponibles. Sí, ¿para cuántas personas necesitaría? Serían dos personas, un cuarto básico. ¿Cuáles son las amenidades que tienen aquí en el hotel? Este, la habitación tiene su aire acondicionado, uh -huh. su baño completo, su televisión con cable. Y las que son para dos personas tienen su cama king size. Ok. Uh -huh. Y el hotel tiene estacionamiento por si traen carro lo pueden dejar, está en la planta baja. Hay un jacuzzi alberca y también tenemos restaurante de 8 de la mañana a 2 de la tarde, excepto los martes, descansamos los martes. Ah, bueno, pues, ¿cuál es el precio del cuarto por noche? Ajá, este, para dos personas la tenemos en 450. 450, ok. Quiero hacer una reservación para tres noches. Ajá, claro que sí. ¿A qué nombre sería? Mayra Larios. Le entrego. Este, ¿Su pago va a ser en efectivo o con tarjeta? ¿Puedo? ¿Aceptan tarjetas? Sí. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Ok, ¿puedo pagarlo con tarjeta? ¿El pago se hace de una vez o puedo pagar al final? Eh, como guste. Igual a veces se les cobra el 50% a la hora de llegada y okay. el 50% restante a la hora de salida. No, no okay. hay problema por eso, ¿verdad? Bueno, ¿a qué hora es um, el checkout? El checkout a las 12. A las 12. Uh -huh. okay. A las 12 del día. ¿Y ahorita ya están los cuartos sí, listos? Sí, disponibles. Entonces, ¿vamos a ver el cuarto? Uh -huh. Claro que sí, fácil. Hola, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Sí, diga. Quiero ver si tiene cuartos disponibles. Quiero ver si tiene cuartos disponibles. I want to... Okay. Uh, and notice, I want to see. This is something we'll do, it, we'll talk about a little bit in summer and into fall. It takes a while. She's using two verbs together. First one gets conjugated, the second one doesn't. I want to see. We have the exact same setup in English. I want to see. To see is the infinitive. Quiero ver. I want to see. You could change that to quiero saber. I want to know. Okay? Pero quiero ver, uh, quiero ver si tiene. And notice, again, the thing to keep in mind, we do not uh, speak uh, uh, tuteando, that means using a tu form. 
we speak using an usted form in a, a hotel or a store setting as a general rule because you don't know these people. So it's always the polite you. Si tiene cuartos disponibles. Aquí tenemos una palabra importante. This is an important word, disponibles. Uh, disponibles looks almost like it might be disposable, but it means available. <laughs> Yeah, you know, if you're trying to think of how can I remember this word? Oh, shoot, it's a long word. It's a long word. Disponibles, disponibles. Disponibles is available. Something that you can book. Disponibles. And it's plural because it's talking about cuartos, rooms. Cuartos and habitaciones are completely interchangeable. Cuartos, rooms, habitaciones, rooms means the same thing. You can use either one, no importa, doesn't matter which one. But disponibles is plural because rooms available. Okay. To see if you have any rooms available. For a simpler phrase, say, ¿Tiene cuartos disponibles? Ah, oh, for a simpler phrase. And we're going to look at yet a second simpler phrase. ¿Tiene cuartos disponibles? Do you have rooms available? It's like us asking, do you have vacancies? Yeah. Okay. We use vacancies, right? Uh, ¿Tiene cuartos disponibles? Can anybody think of another verb we could plug in there besides tiene to ask if there are rooms versus full up, you know? Can you guys think of another verb we might use besides tiene? Do you have? Hacer? No. Almost. I I. Oh. oh, another easy way to ask this question, and even easier because you don't need an usted form, because there's only one form for this verb, you could rephrase this as hay cuartos disponibles. Hay, H-A-Y, hay, hay cuartos disponibles. So the thing to remember when you walk in, and you know, Linda, this is for you. You oh, immediately, you're so, oh my gosh, I can't write it down. I've got to speak to this person, right? We need to be able to talk our way around and know, shoot, if I can't come up with tiene, what other verb might I be able to use? And a good all purpose is always I. Is there? I or are there in this case? Because are there rooms? Hay cuartos disponibles. Okay. So, in many many situations, there's more than one way to express an idea you want to communicate. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any rooms available? Sí. Para cuántas personas necesitaría? ¿Para cuántas personas necesitaría? For how many people? Okay, now, she uses a verb there in a form you do not know. Necesitaría means would you need. ¿Para cuántas personas neces uh, necesitaría? But the important thing, back this just, just a little bit so that you can read it. Here's another listening cue. You're not necessarily, when you're speaking or listening uh, to somebody, you're not necessarily gonna catch every single word. And it's important for you to know, it's okay, <laughs> believe it or not, not to catch every word. Maybe you're gonna catch every other word. When I listen in French, I sometimes catch every seven out of ten words i sometimes catch only four or five words out of a sentence and that's my level that's where i am so okay the important thing is to know not to panic because even if you can only get 
three words out of this or two words out of this, you might be okay. Para cuantas personas, the two words you ought to be able to hear out of this question are cuantas personas, cuantas personas. So even if you only pick up a little bit, you're probably going to get the gist of what the question is asking. Para cuantas personas necesitaría? If you don't know necesitaría, you kind of know, well, maybe you'll catch that that means a need question. But the, para cuantas personas, how many people? You should be able to grab those two, cuantas personas, those two words, and know she's asking how many people which is going to be obvious in that context that she wants to know how many people are staying in the room. How big a room are you looking for? Okay. Vamos a continuar. We're going to continue. Yeah. Serían dos personas, un cuarto básico. Serían dos personas, un cuarto básico. Un cuarto básico, basic room. You know what? You, for a lot of us, estadounidenses, U.S. people, estadounidenses, a lot of us want un cuarto con baño. Con baño, con baño is a big thing with us. Why is con baño a big thing with us? Because a lot of hotels in other countries might have a shared bathroom. And, you know, en los tiempos de cuarentena and quarantine times, or coming out of quarantine times, you're probably not going to want that shared bathroom. You know, when I was 18 years old, 20 years old and traveling, it did not matter to me if I had a shared bathroom. Well, okay, it wasn't great, but you know, 18 or 20, you don't really care because you're looking for the cheapest thing you can possibly do. We are a little bit more comfortable, right? Uh, we want to be a little more comfortable. Con baño, con baño, con baño, you're usually going to want a bathroom in the room, right? Uh, she uses a serían dos personas. Here's a different way you can express it. Let's say you're not traveling alone. You're traveling with a husband, with a family member. You somos, we are. She uses a serían dos personas. There would be two people. But an easier way, because you know this verb, you don't know serían, a conditional for ser. You don't know that. No importa. It doesn't matter that you don't know that. Somos. We are. That's like saying it's four. Somos dos personas. Somos tres personas. Somos cuatro personas. Maybe you're traveling with uh, your, a spouse and, and two family members. Or a, a spouse and uh, and you know two people who are stay, uh, staying in the room. If you're really really cozy, all four of you being together, right? But somos dos personas, somos cuatro personas, somos tres personas, somos we are. You're telling her how many people are in the group, okay? So I'm trying to give you some steer arounds, things you can use because you don't know that set in, and to memorize that is going to be. You know, te cuesta. It costs you. It costs you effort to do that. But you know, somos, we are. Okay? Somos dos personas. Un cuarto básico. I, I would not say un cuarto básico. Un cuarto, un cuarto con baño. Un cuarto con baño. Okay? It would be two people. A basic room. Here, you can add any specific things you're looking for. Like... Quisiera un cuarto con dos camas. I'd like a room with two beds. Okay, and here's what quisiera steps in. If you're just talking about what you want, you use quiero or queremos, right? The present tense. But this is the polite way of saying I would want, which translates into English as we would say I would like. You don't necessarily need gustar. You need quisiera. I would want. It is the super polite way when you're face to face making a direct request. Quisiera. Or yo quisiera. Yo quisiera works too. You can put a yo in front of that. Yo quisiera. Quisiera un cuarto con dos camas. 
And here's where you tell them how big the room is uh, or that you need, right? Quisiera un, un cuarto individual, uh, you know, a onesie room. Quierto un cuarto uh, doble. But con dos camas with two beds, that tells her how many beds. Okay. Quisiera un cuarto con baño privado. And here's your baño privado. Sometimes you don't need the privado. Privado is private. You can probably guess that. Con baño. Con baño, you know, the implication is the bathroom is in your sweet room, not shared down the hallway. Especially youth hostels will have that bathroom down the hallway. I'd like a room with a private bathroom. Or, Quisiera un cuarto con tina de baño. I'd like a room with a bathtub. And maybe you don't want a bathtub. Con ducha. Con ducha with a shower. Quiero un cuarto con ducha. So see, there are always a number of words you might want to use. Con ducha. ¿Cuáles son las amenidades que tienen aquí en el hotel? ¿Cuáles son las amenidades que tienen aquí en el hotel? Okay. That is a whole heck of a mouthful. ¿Cuáles son? ¿Cuáles son? What are? Amenidades, you can probably guess. Amenities, right? The extras, the other little services that are in the hotel. But when we're asking what are the other services in the hotel, we don't use que son. Que son means what are when you're asking for a definition. Cuales son is asking which ones out of all the possible amenities. All the many, many choices that might be between an absolute luxury hotel and an absolutely basic, basic, basic youth hostel. What are all the amenities that you offer? Are there pools? Is there a, a jacuzzi? Uh, are there hair dryers? Is there a room to wash clothing? All those things are considered amenities, right? ¿Cuáles son las amenidades? ¿Qué tienen aquí, which you guys have? Here. Aquí, just here. ¿Qué tienen aquí, that you have here? So if you break this down to absolutely memorize it, memorize it in chunks. And here are the chunks you would need to break it down, like bracket them somehow. ¿Cuáles son? ¿Cuáles son? ¿Cuáles son? What are? ¿Cuáles son las amenidades? Las amenidades que tienen aquí, que tienen aquí, that you have here, en el hotel. And you could even drop the en el hotel. Que tienen aquí means that you have here. She's just adding a lot of information. That's how this sentence wound up being so long. So you can strip this down to a more basic, a shorter, and easier to remember sentence. ¿Cuáles son las amenidades aquí? Will get you down to the absolute stripped down basics. If you can't get out that great big long sentence. ¿Cuáles son las amenidades aquí? That will get you down to the basics. Okay, continuamos. What amenities do you have here at the hotel? Este, la habitación tiene su aire acondicionado, mm -hmm. su baño completo, su televisión con cable, y las que son para dos personas tienen su cama king size. Oh. Room amenities. Aire acondicionado. Air conditioning. Baño completo. Full bathroom. Televisión con cable. Cable TV. Cama king size. King size bed. And notice here, cama king size, yeah, that's borrowed because so many people ask for it. 
it's just because becomes something they've borrowed into their language. Also, kama queen size, you you'll hear people saying kama queen size. You know, it'll sound like Spanish pronunciation, queen size. Okay. Y el hotel tiene estacionamiento por si traen carro lo pueden dejar, está en la planta baja. Hay un jacuzzi alberca y también tenemos restaurant de 8 de la mañana a 2 de la tarde, excepto los martes, descansamos los martes. Hotel amenities. Estacionamiento. Parking. Jacuzzi alberca. Jacuzzi pool. Okay. Uh, alberca, alberca is the room most commonly used in Mexico to say a pool. So alberca is one thing, it's just a swimming pool. Jac jacuzzi alberca is jacuzzi pool, so a hot tub, yeah? Hot tub, and they might just term it as jacuzzi. But alberca would be a swimming pool, alberca. If you go to other countries, they may not use the word alberca, they may use the word piscina, which you had in your book. Piscina is a swimming pool, okay, piscina. Think of zodiac sign Pisces, the fish swimming. Literally, that's the word it comes from, you know, from the Latin way back, piscina. But alberca is the word they like to use in Mexico for pool. Restaurant. Restaurant. Notice how some people say restaurant instead of restaurante. Anglicisms are very common in the hotel industry in Latin America. You can simply say restaurante. Other amenities you might be interested in are Internet inalámbrico. Wireless internet. Okay, I'm going to pause here. Inalámbrico. Alámbrico is a wire. Alambre, uh, alambre is wire, actually. Alambre. Alambre is wire. Inalámbrico just means wireless. In, uh, the in in the beginning of it like saying invisible, not visible, inalámbrico, no wire. Inalambre is wireless. A, a faster way, and almost everybody, almost everybody recognizes the term Wi-Fi. And generally though, I'll, in a, <coughs> perdón, I, I know when I've been in Spain, they just, they, they pronounce it like you would spell it. The Wi-Fi is pronounced Wi-Fi. Uh, I, I do not know in Mexico if they pronounce it as Wi-Fi, but I would not be a bit surprised. Uh, they probably even just know the term as Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, but Wi-Fi. You know, Wi-Fi se dice Wi-Fi, and everybody says it as Wi-Fi in Spain. So that is way shorter term than Internet inalámbrico. Are you going to remember and pull out of the back of your gray matter Internet inalámbrico? Probably not. Would I? Maybe not. You know what? I would be saying Wi-Fi. Uh, and they'll absolutely know what that is. So don't think you've got to memorize that term, internet inalámbrico. Okay. Servicio al cuarto. Room service. Transportación al aeropuerto. Airport shuttle. Ooh, now that could be something you might want. Transportación al aeropuerto. You can shorten that to transporte. Transporte gets across the same idea. So the reason we're looking at this and pausing is to give you different, different ways of working around in the event that you forget a vocabulary word, right? Uh, transporte al aeropuerto. Uh, un bus al aeropuerto, un taxi al aeropuerto. You know, there are a lot of things you can use to talk about ways to get to the airport. Transportación al aeropuerto, because of course shuttles are a thing with a lot of um, hotels, okay? Y servicio al cuarto, room service, if that's important to you, servicio al cuarto. Estacionamiento, I do want to point out one thing about estacionamiento. Estacionamiento is the formal word for parking. Estacionar is to park, the verb meaning to park a vehicle. Estacionamiento, miento just makes it into a noun, okay? Like pavement, 
takes paving and makes it into a noun, pavement. This is relating to our ment. It's a Latin thing again. It's just instead of ment, miento, miento. Estacionamiento, estacionamiento. You will hear in some countries, uh, parquear. Some countries, they do use the word parquear to park. So, you know, para que sepan, just so you know. For more uh, phrases and vocabulary. Oh, perdón, sí, sí, Nora, dime. <laughs> Um, I just had a question about the jacuzzi alberca. In uh -huh. the United States, if you say jacuzzi, everybody knows what a jacuzzi is. Would you have to add pool behind that when you're in one of the other okay, no. Mexico? I think not. No. I wouldn't bother with it. You know, I, I think um, they will absolutely know what that is. Hot tub, maybe not, but jacuzzi, sí. Yeah. Es buena pregunta. That's a good question. February, visit the link in the description where you can download the PDF that accompanies this episode. Ah, bueno, pues, ¿cuál es el precio del cuarto por noche? ¿Cuál es el precio del cuarto por noche? Okay, so here is an important thing to be able to know. Uh, ¿Cuál es el precio? ¿Cuál es el precio? Not qué es el precio. Not when you're at the desk, ¿qué es el precio? ¿Qué es el precio? Asks, what does pre precio mean? You know what precio means. You don't want to, you're not going on the vocab thing. You're, you're saying, I, I want to know how much money. ¿Cuál es? What is the price? Because there's a different price for single rooms. There's a, a different price for double rooms, right? There's a different uh, a price for a big suite that might have you know, more space in it, like a living room attached to it. Okay, so ¿cuál es el precio? Out of all those different kinds of rooms that you've got available, ¿cuál es el precio? Which one? You're picking it out of the group. ¿Cuál es el precio? You can just shorten to that to ¿cuál es el precio por noche? They know you're asking about el cuarto, right? ¿Cuál es el precio del cuarto? for the room, okay, but you can shorten that to ¿Cuál es el precio por noche? Por noche means per night. Por noche, bien? ¿Cuál es el precio por noche? What's the price of the room per night? Carolyn? Uh -huh. Este para dos. Sí, 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 dime. At some point, would you sort of talk about when you use the article before the noun and when you don't. As I'm trying to form sentences, I find that sometimes when I'm using Duolingo, you put the article before a noun and the next time you don't. So at some point in time, would you cover that? Uh, you are not the first person to ask that question. Um, uh, that is a question better left for when we uh, when we get into summer, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, okay, my short answer for today, and we'll get more into that later in summer session. Uh, I'll, I'll include that on my roadmap next week. Um, the short answer for now is that it doesn't matter a whole lot for you as a beginner to stress too much right now over that. Um, and I know, you know, if you're on Duolingo, they'll, and they'll give you the, eh, you got that wrong versus, you know, ee, ding, 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 you got it right. There are kind of some rules, but if when you're just trying to communicate with a, a person in a service situation, like at a front desk, a receptionist, uh, they will still totally understand you if you mess up with, oh, I forgot the article or I didn't. They, that won't make a big difference for you at this stage. Okay. But we will go over some of that so that you can feel more comfortable with it. And where perhaps it makes a bigger difference and it does matter versus, oh, it doesn't matter at all. Okay? Yeah. Dos personas la tenemos en 450. Para dos personas la tenemos en 450. Okay, so now she said that very, very quickly. Let's back that up. En 450. 
Para dos personas la tenemos en 450. Para dos personas la tenemos en 450. Ok, let's take a look at that. Para dos personas, for two people. So, of course, the way she said that, what you would probably need to do would be to ask her to slow down. Because <laughs> you want to know you got that price right. Of course you do. Claro que sí. ¿Cómo se dice? Mm, slower, please. Slower, please. Or repeat it. How would you ask her to do that? Because there are a couple ways you can ask her and, and signal to her, I didn't get that. And she will be very nice, and, and, but you got to know how to ask that. ¿Cómo se dice slower or repeat? Repeat, por favor. Yeah, and, and the way you'll ask it is the polite way. So instead of repite with an eh, eh, eh at the end, it'll have an ah, ah, ah at the end. Repita. Repita, por favor. Repita, por favor. And always put a por favor after it. Repita, por favor. That's a command. But it's not a bossy command because you're putting in por favor. <laughs> right? They'll never think you're being bossy by giving a command. Repita, por favor. Repita, por favor. There is the easy way. Or, más despacio, por favor. Más despacio. Más, more, despacio, slow. More slow. Más despacio, por favor. Más despacio, por favor. But the best thing, uh, um, perdón, perdón, disculpe. Repita, por favor. Repita, por favor. And they'll know. Okay. But, para dos personas, there's the part that tells that she recognizes it's for two people. Not a one person charge, but a two. Para dos personas. Para dos personas for two people. There's your recognition of the number of people being charged. And now here's the part you maybe might not know. A la tenemos. La tenemos. What the heck is that la? La tenemos. The la means it. Meaning the room. Meaning habitación. La tenemos. We have it. Which they phrase it as it we have. You're probably not going to touch that part of the sentence that means it we have. Nor are you going to recognize that they say it in the word order of it we have. That's going to go over your head. So don't worry about that. Maybe the, oh, tenemos, we have. Okay. La tenemos. Para dos personas la tenemos. And here comes the part you want to be able to recognize. 450. 450. And maybe you want to say it, phrase it as, ah, repita el precio, por favor. Repita el precio, por favor. Repeat the price. Maybe you don't want all that other stuff. You just want to know that number. Repita el precio, por favor. At which point she's only going to take out that essential information. 450. 450. And it's always in pesos because she doesn't say pesos. Well, uh, yes. The, what, uh, she's not going to be quoting you in dollars. Unless you're in a, a, a country that accepts dollars. Okay, por ejemplo, for example, I know, um, I know if you're in Panama, uh, in many, many parts of Panama, they may quote you in dollars because a lot of places in Panama will accept U.S. dollars, don't need to exchange it. Now, that's an exception to the rule. You know, you go to Peru to do the Machu Picchu thing. Yeah. Uh, you go to Chile, you go to Argentina, down to Buenos Aires. They're not just going to say, we'll take those dollars. I mean, I, I'm sure... There are some situations, especially with taxi drivers, where if they really want U.S. dollars, they may accept it, but then you got to calculate in your head, what is that equivalent to, or am I being ripped off? I mean, literally, you do have to think about that. So when they quote you, they're quoting you in their monetary unit, whatever that may be. 
And in this case, she's not saying peso, so that's why you've got pesos in, in parentheses. When she quotes that number, 450, she's quoting in pesos. So now, yeah, you probably want to know what the exchange rate is, but you know, you've probably looked that up before you left on the plane because exchange rate is a very, very flexible thing. And it depends on the monetary unit of the place you're going to. You know, you hear 450, 450, you might be thinking, yeah, wow. But you know, you got to be thinking exchange rate. What is the peso for dollar exchange rate? Now, <laughs> today, because three months from now, it might be different. Next week, it might be different. Two days from now, it might be different, right? But that's, you know, yeah, that's their money they're quoting you in. Okay. They are not going to translate that into dollars for you, ever. I, I mean, I've never had them anybody do that. You got to be able to do that on your own knowledge. For two people, it's 450. 450, okay. Quiero hacer una reservación para tres noches. Quiero hacer una reservación para tres noches. Okay, this part maybe was a little easier for you to hear. Quiero hacer, I want to make. Quiero hacer, quiero hacer, there's the chunk you want. Quiero hacer, I want to make. Una reservación, a reservation. And now, how long? Para tres noches. Para tres noches for three nights. Uh, you can shorten that. Here's how you can shorten that. Uh, quiero reservar. Quiero reservar. You can turn reservación into a verb. And the verb is reservar. Quiero reservar un cuarto. I want to reserve a room. Quiero rese uh, reservar un cuarto para tres noches, para una semana, para dos noches, however long. The para means for, and now you've got your quantity of time. Marilyn, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you know when to use por versus para? Ah, bien. I, okay. I get mixed up. Sí. Uh, Para tres noches, uh, uh, para en por. Para en por both mean for, but sometimes they don't mean for. <laughs> Here it is for. Um, por, in a, in, uh, por in particular has more than one translation. Uh, um, por can mean in exchange for. And you're not saying in exchange for three nights. You're saying for the duration of you know, this three nights, this is what I wanted. So when you're making a reservation, just think para with the number of nights. Uh, para en por is a long, is a big topic. Okay. And a heavy topic. Por is used in exchange for. Okay. Uh, but when you want that, you know, three nights stint, para tres noches is good. Okay. I want oh, to make a reservation for three nights. Ajá, uh claro que sí. ¿A qué nombre sería? ¿A qué nombre sería? Under what name? Mayra Larios. Le entrego. Este, ¿Su pago va a ser en efectivo o con tarjeta? ¿Su pago va a ser en efectivo o con tarjeta? Ok. Here's an important one. Su pago, your payment. They might phrase that as paga con. Paga con tarjeta. Paga, and then the paga will be implying usted. Uh, but here, uh, su pago va a ser, su pago va a ser, your payment is going to be. Su pago va a ser, 
your payment is going to be. En efectivo just means cash. Dinero en efectivo, dinero en efectivo means cash money, <laughs> okay? But often instead of saying dinero en efectivo, they just shorten it to en efectivo. En efectivo is cash, actual uh, hard cash. Con tarjeta, con tarjeta, with a card. And that card may be debit, that card may be credit. Con tarjeta, they know they're taking either a debit or a credit. Will your payment be in cash or with a card? ¿Aceptan tarjetas? Sí. sí. Ok, ¿puedo pagarlo con tarjeta? ¿Puedo pagarlo con tarjeta? Can I pay with a card? Ok. ¿Puedo pagar? ¿Puedo pagar? And she sticks a lot on the end. The lot just means it. ¿Puedo pagarlo? Can I pay for it? You can phrase it as ¿Puedo pagar? Can I pay? without the word lo at the end. Con tarjeta. ¿El pago se hace de una vez o puedo pagar al final? ¿El pago se hace de una vez o puedo pagar al final? Okay, wow, there's a mouthful. All she's asking is, do you pay it all up front? De una vez means one time. Okay. El pago se hace, is the payment made all at once. El pago se hace. Is the payment made? El pago se hace de una vez. De una vez, all at once. O puedo pagar al final. Or can I pay at the end? Puedo pagar. Can I pay? Puedo pagar. We'll take a very brief look at that verb puedo. We're going to hit that more uh, next during summer session, for sure. Because puedo is a really important verb. Puedo is just as important as quiero. Do I have to pay now, or can I pay at the end of my stay? Uh, como guste. Igual a veces se les cobra el 50% a la hora de llegada y okay. el 50% restante a la hora de salida, no? Oh, my! You're not going to catch all that. No way. Como guste. Como guste, as you wish. Como guste is however you wish, however you want to. Como guste. Como guste is a subjunctive form. And what that means to you is nothing. What it means to you practically is however you like. However you may want to do it. Igual. Igual means equally, same way. A veces se les cobra. We're going to look at this word cobra and look at that word cobra later. Cobra is also an important word when you deal with hotels, taxis in particular. Uh, a veces se les cobra. Sometimes uh, the charge is made to you. See, el 50%, 50%, 50%, so 50%, 50%, you say, yay, I know that means 50. 50%, por ciento, por ciento, por ciento, percent. El 50% is 50%. A, a la hora de llegada, a, uh, a la hora de llegada, upon arrival, at the time of arrival. Llegada is an arrival when you're in the airport and you're looking at signs for arrivals. Llegada is arrival in the hotel, too. Llegada, arrival, ¿sí? Y ya el 50 a restante. Restante remaining. El 50 restante. And the 50%, meaning the other 50%. A la hora de salida. Hora de salida. Check out, leaving. Just like salida in the airport means departures, salida in the hotel means huh, departing from the hotel, leaving the hotel, check out time. You'll notice she used the word check out, right? She did use that, but hora de salida. Okay. Como guste, igual. A veces se les cobra el 50% a la hora de llegada y ya el 50% restante 
a la hora de salida. As you wish. Sometimes we charge 50% upon arrival and the other 50% at checkout. No, no hay okay. problema por eso, ¿verdad? Bueno, ¿a qué hora es um, el checkout? ¿A qué hora es el checkout? What time is checkout? El checkout a las 12. A las 12. Okay. A las 12 del día. A las 12 del día. At 12 in the afternoon. In Mexico, it's common to hear a las 12 del día when referring to 12 in the afternoon. Yeah, because, you know, de la noche, wow, preferably you're asleep. Yeah, okay. Y ahorita ya están los cuartos sí, listos? Sí, disponibles. Ahorita ya están los cuartos listos? Okay, and this word listo is kind of related to disponible a little bit. Disponible or disponibles, because they're talking about cuartos. Disponibles meant available, but listos means ready. Meaning it's all made up, it's been cleaned, and it's, it's set for you to bring your, your luggage in, okay? Uh, ya están listos. Ya están listos already, right? Ya, the ya just means like uh, ahorita ya, ahorita ya, right now. Right now, at this exact moment. Ahorita ya están los cuartos listos. Are they ready? Are the rooms ready now? Entonces, ¿vamos a ver el cuarto? Mm -hmm. Claro que sí, fácil. ¿Vamos a ver el cuarto? Okay, vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Uh, can we go see him? Okay, you want to see the room that you're going to rent? Vamos a ver, vamos a ver el cuarto, vamos a ver el cuarto. Vamos a ver, this again is that thing we're going to talk about during summer session, that idea of, of uh, uh, putting two verbs together, right? Go to see. The two C stays ver, but vamos a, we're going to. And you know the vamos part, we're going to. Can we go see the room? Claro que sí. Pásele. Of course. Go ahead. Come on in. And that's all there is to it. Okay. Eso es todo. That is it. And, um, okay. So, I, and actually that pase is an important word or no. Pásele. Uh, they like to use le a lot in Mexico. Pásele. Uh, pase always means come on in. And people will say that if you're coming in a shop, if you're coming in the hotel, if they're showing you into the room, pasele, come on in. Está bien? Okay. Bueno. Tienen otras preguntas? Tienen ustedes otras preguntas del video? Do you have any other questions about the video? We're going to see if you have, uh, we're going to give you time to do some talking after this. Uh, Marilyn, I had a question um, where they were talking about the forms of payment, cash or card. Would we, would, would we also want to be a little more specific, like which cards do you accept or do you accept American Express instead of just oh, the card? Oh, buena pregunta. What a good question. You can ask that. And fortunately for all of us, uh, the verb for... Uh, the verb is a cognate. Aceptar. I've put it in the chat box. And if you haven't activated that, click on the chat box. Aceptar means to accept. Okay. Uh, comes from the same Latin root. That's why they share it. They didn't copy it from English like king size. <laughs> this one is just aceptar. Aceptar. And it's a regular verb. So, the usted form will be acepta. Or you could phrase it as aceptan, do you guys? Or acepta, do you accept? Acepta, uh, acepta American Express. Acepta Visa. Acepta Discover. You can just put in, you know, la marca, the, the brand, right? Uh, una tarjeta, si sí, con tarjeta. Es una tarjeta falsa. This is a fake. You know those fakies you get? Yeah, apply for this card now that you get like 50 of these every year. Okay. 
a acepta acepta tarje, una tarjeta de discover acepta you accept es así ya yeah? okay uh, aceptas efectivo 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 es cash sí it will be very very uh, uh, uncommon for people not to accept this these are so universal now I know sometimes in Arizona we do go to places where they don't accept a credit card usually where does that wind up being you know maybe some little smaller mom-and-pop restaurants or some tourist shops once in a while but you know what a decent sized hotel they're almost always going to take that but which brand you're right could be a thing that could so acepta 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 american express acepta visa acepta mastercard they'll, they'll know the brands es buena pregunta aceptar uh, i'm going to type in the chat box another uh, verb she used. Esto es importante. This is an important verb too. Cobrar. Cobrar. And you will hear this word used a lot. Cobrar um, looks, oh, it sounds a little like cubrir, but they're not the same. Cobrar. Cobrar is used by the landscaping guys who come to your house to ask to do landscaping. It's used by taxi drivers. It's used in hotels. Cobrar means to charge. So uh, uh, the way, uh, there are a couple ways you uh, may hear this. Le cobro, I charge you. Le cobro. Le cobro means I charge you. What if you want to know what they're going to charge? Ah, then you got to know how to ask for you to do the charging. The cobrar is conjugated for whoever does the charging, right? Le cobro, I charge you. So that means how much money I'm going to ask for, right? But how much uh, you're going to ask for, ooh, and I always got to get my messy with my pronunciation or my punctuation keys uh, okay oh we want to ask how much come on Sophie, say how much how much cuanto and we're going to take the s off the end because cuantos is how many you want to count them up one two three four five six we want to ask how much will you charge me cuanto me cobra Cuánto me cobra? Cuánto me cobra? Cuánto me cobra? Cuánto me cobra? How much are you going to charge me? And the me means to me, meaning I'm getting the fee. <laughs> I'm the one stuck with the bill. That's the me part. I'm receiving the charge, not I'm charging it. I'm, I'm receiving the charge. Cuánto me cobra? How much will you charge me? Cuánto me cobra? Cuánto me cobra una habitación? Cuánto me cobra un cuarto? How much will you charge me for a room? Para dos noches, for two nights. Okay? Uh, para tres noches, para cuatro noches, lo que sea, whichever number of nights it might be. Okay, so cobrar, and it's a regular verb, it doesn't do any funny stuff, so, you know, es importante. Cobrar is an important uh, verb to know. Okay, está bien. Hay más preguntas. No? Uh, Hay alguien que, que quiere compartirnos unas ideas the the un hotel típico let's go into that little homework bit now you've got a little bit a few more words i'm going to share one extra screen 
one extra screen before we start that. So I'm going to, that'll give you a little bit of time if you wrote something down on a piece of paper to kind of get that pulled together. And this is the last screen we're going to share before we move on to your doing some, some sharing and practice. Here is a group of verbs that you may want to use when you talk about what you want uh, or, or to ask at a reception desk for what they have, right? I is a really useful verb. There are, or there is. I, there is, there are. That doesn't ever change form, right? Tiene, do you have? Or you might just say, el hotel tiene, the hotel has. Because remember now, what you're saying isn't going to be like what you saw in the video where you're asking me as a recepcionista, a receptionist. You're just going to say what you look for in a room, right? You're just going to be talking about, right? So, tiene, el hotel tiene, the hotel has. Quiero, I want. Queremos, we want. Tengo, I have. Cuanto cuesta, how much does it cost? You might just say, uh, you might just cut off the cuanto, el hotel cuesta, the hotel costs, like what range your ideal ho hotel, uh, you know, is in. And, um, you know, this had a, a larger group of words. And you see down here at the bottom, una reserva means the same as una reservación. Una reservación is reservation. Una reserva is also reservation, right? Habitación con ducha is the same as cuarto con ducha. Una habitación is the same as un cuarto. Acceso a internet, internet access. Acceso a wifi might be the same thing, right? Wi-Fi. Because they really aren't going to be expecting you to bring in a plug. The old modem plug, right? Uh, you know, esto es importante. If you're talking back and forth with the receptionist person, tengo, and remember, it's un problema. <laughs> That's a little uh, typo they got. Tengo un problema. Tengo un, not una. Tengo un problema. I have a problem. But you're just going to be describing, of course, what typically you look for in a room. Voy a empezar. I'll begin. Muy, algo muy corto. Uh, cuando viajo, voy a, cuando viajo, voy de vacaciones con mi esposo. Voy de vacaciones con mi esposo. A veces, voy con mi esposo y mi hija, o voy con mi esposo y mi hijo. A veces, Generalmente somos tres. Viajamos los tres. The three of us. Viajamos los tres. Y siempre, always, siempre queremos una habitación con aire acondicionado. Queremos una habitación con aire acondicionado. Queremos un cuarto con baño, un cuarto con ducha. Un baño con ducha es importante para nosotros. Queremos un cuarto que también tiene sillas cómodas, una mesa, una mesa y necesitamos wifi. Siempre queremos un cuarto con wifi, con buen wifi, con wifi rápido. Con wifi que funciona with Wi-Fi that works. They're gonna, never going to tell you that Wi-Fi doesn't work, even if it doesn't. Pero sí, queremos wifi, ¿verdad? Uh, cuando voy con mi hija, mi hija quiere una alberca o una piscina. Uh, a mi hija le gusta tener, le gusta tener... Una alberca. Le gusta tener una piscina siempre. Para mí, no es importante tener cuarto al servicio. No es importante que tiene un restaurante en el hotel. 
porque me gusta caminar en el pueblo y me gusta ver muchos restaurantes en el pueblo. Entonces, para mí no es importante tener un restaurante en el hotel. Ni, no, ni es importante tener cuarto, uh, uh, servicio al cuarto. Room service. No es importante. Ah, es importante. Quiero un hotel que tiene un cuarto para lavar la ropa. Para lavar la ropa. ¿Por qué? Porque cuando vamos de vacaciones a practicamos senderismo, we hike. Uh, damos caminatas, we go hiking. Y muchas veces tenemos la ropa muy sucia. La ropa uh, sucia. Después de caminar, entonces quiero un, un cuarto para lavar la ropa. ¿Verdad? Ok. ¿Quieren ustedes hablar un poquito del hotel ideal? ¿De qué ustedes quieren en un hotel? ¿Quieren, ¿Quién quiere empezar? Who wants to start? I will. Ah, bien. Fantástico. Gracias. Okay. I will try to pronounce some of these. Cuando mi esposo y yo hacemos un viaje, queremos ir a la playa. Mm. Queremos un cuarto con una vista del océano. Exacto. Um, disfrutamos el buceo de superficie. Uh, superficie would be the, the surface. Snorkeling. It, well, it's supposed to be snorkeling. El buceo de superficie. Oh, ok, ok. Uh, sí, buceo, just buceo, just buceo okay. would work. Ok, el buceo. Yeah. Superficie queremos... means you're not like deep sea diving. <laughs> Superficie means, yeah, okay. truly the snorkeling, you're just under the surface of the water. Ok, bien. Ok, y queremos aguilar, aguilar, aguilar el equipo. Alquilar, rent? Alquilar, alquilar. alquilar. El equipo cerca o en, o en el hotel. Gustamos hacer ejercicio. Por lo tanto, queremos un cuarto de ejercicio en el hotel. That's hard okay. to say. Alquilar, alquilar to rent. I'm putting it up in the chat box. Alquilar. Si... Si le gusta una actividad, mm -hmm. una actividad física, un deporte, mm -hmm. a veces es importante alquilar el equipo, rent the equipment, como con buceo, like with snorkeling, mm -hmm. ¿ok? Es importante uh, alquilar el equipo, ¿sí? Uh, con... Con, um, si vas de vacaciones con uh, vacaciones de esquiar, esquiar en las montañas, mm -hmm. es importante alquilar el equipo, los esquís y todo. ¿Bien? Y las botas, the boots, ¿sí? Mm -hmm. Ok. Magnífico. Hiciste bien. You did well. Ok. ¿Alguien más quiere compartir un poquito? Want to share a little bit? Ah, bien. Tengo dos casas para que no mucho viejo de vacaciones. Pero mi habitación de hotel ideal tiene un decieno incluido. 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 Included. Un balcón de beber, un tazo de café, un vaso divino. Uh. Una nevera, nevera pequeña por los quesos y las frutas. ¿Una nevera? Una nevera. Una nevera. Nevera pequeña. 
uh, una silla cómoda con la luz, o leer el periódico o el libro. Ajá. Air acondicionado central, no air acondicionado de ventura. Acondicionado de, de ventana? Ventana, ventana. Ventana, ok. Sí, ventana, window, sí. Uh, bien, sí. Porque mi, porque mi esposo tiene alergias uh -huh. y alergias severas a veces. A él le gusta tener siempre el aire acondicionado. A mí me gusta abrir las ventanas, pero a él no le gusta abrir las ventanas porque tiene alergias. Y para él es importante tener el aire acondicionado, ¿no? Sí. A mí no me importa tanto, pero a él le importa muchísimo. Le importa, it matters to him, le importa muchísimo. Ok, bien, sí, una silla cómoda, muchas veces uh, queremos un patio para, para sentar afuera y, ¿sí? y, y leer el periódico o un libro, uh -huh. relajar, relax, relajarse, bien, ok, y sí, sí, bien, muy bien. ¿Alguien más tiene algo? ¿Anybody else? I can go. Ok. Uh, me gusta tener una habitación para no fumador con una cama king, baño vivido, refrigerador pequeño y una chocolate en mi alfumada. Oh, una, un chocolate en la almohada. Almohada. Almohada es pillow. Uh, oh, pillow, no, pillow. <laughs> I, I have fat finger moment there. Uh, una, un chocolate en la almohada. Ah, uh, uh, sí, encima de, encima de, on top of, encima de la almohada, on top of the pillow. Exacto. Uh, solamente en los hoteles de lujo. De lujo is luxury. De lujo. En los hoteles de lujo, casi siempre hay una galleta cookie o un chocolate uh, que, que les ponen encima de la almohada, encima, on top of, ¿sí? Sí. Es un toque, es un toque pequeño. It's a little touch. Sí, bien. Ok. Ah, muy bien. Ok. ¿Algo más? Nora, ¿tienes algo? Uh, me gusta... Uh, I just want... Oh, perdón. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought Cynthia was... No, no, perdón, Cynthia. ¿Tienes I más? Want more. <laughs> oh, perdón. No, 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 no. Continúa, por favor. No, me gusta tener el desayuno incluido con, con ticino, hueves, huevo de naranja y café. Uh, desayuno americano. Uh, es bueno si el hotel tiene un conserje para ayudar con entrados para teatros y museos. Ah, ok. Sí, uh, entradas, uh, entradas son tickets, o tickets, plural, perdón, sí. Entradas. A veces hay una persona cerca de él, la, uh, uh, o el recepcionista, la recepcionista, lo que sea. Uh, sí, una persona como concierge, ¿sí? sí. Que, que puede comprar entradas. Entradas are tickets, not when it's a ticket for uh, the, like the plane. Okay. Or train. Entradas. And, and it's easier to remember that this is ticket. Entradas is your entrance into the hotel, right? Entrada. Uh, so yeah, uh, and that makes a little sense that it won't be necessarily tiquete. And you may hear tiquete, you may, because you know, many, many places they'll use bi, uh, billete, tiquete, uh, uh, tiquete, uh, boleto, entrada. But entrada, entrada, and it's always feminina, entrada 
is your entrance. And you know, we often think of this as your entrance into the hotel or into the nightclub, you know, mm-hmm. whenever it's going into uh, not a vehicle, but a building, getting into that mm-hmm. building or a park, right? Ah, un zoológico azul, un parque especial, un museo, anything that it's a, you know, location like that. Entrada is the usual word for a ticket. The entrance fee mm-hmm. is logical. Okay. That one's logical. See? Okay. Y, y más, Cynthia, o oh, no? No. Oh, Eso uh, es todo. Eso es todo. Okay. Sí. Entradas, tickets. Sí. Okay. Muy bien. Bueno, Nora. Okay. I realized when I was doing these, everything is I like or we like. So that's, that's what okay. you're going to hear. Está bien. Es, Es buena cosa repasar, me gusta, me gusta, me gustan y me gusta. Es buena cosa. Okay. Great. A mi pareja y a mí nos gustan los hoteles donde podemos obtener puntos de recompensa. Oh, otra vez, la, la, la última parte de West Park, repite, por favor. Um, puntos de recompensa. Recompensa, ok. Um, Nos gustan los hoteles que incluyen desayuno, pero también nos gusta probar los restaurantes de la zona. Nos gusta cuidarnos en habitaciones en pisos superiores, no en el primo piso. Oh, ok. Primer, uh, primer piso... Uh, first floor um, mm-hmm. and, and and what they use for first floor may differ if they may use planta baja mm-hmm. planta baja would mean ground floor which we call first floor sometimes instead of planta it they may use piso floor okay yeah okay. and then i have one more um, nos gusta visitar lugares locales como museo museo oh. Museos y Museos. galerías cerca de nuestro hotel. Ok. Uh, nos gusta visitar, me gusta visitar. Uh, sí. Uh, museos, iglesias, uh, sitios históricos, historic sites. Sí, claro. Uh, bien. Y esta cosa sí de... Uh, Del desayuno incluido. Uh, muchas veces se dice, sí, un desayuno continental. Continental, sí. O desa- desayuno incluido es muy común, ¿no? Uh, a veces el desayuno eh, está incluido, uh, otras veces no. Uh, eh, he leído, I have read, he leído que... Esta amenidad del desayuno incluido quizás, maybe, quizás va a desaparecer. Desaparecer un poquito mm. por causa de COVID, de coronavirus. Uh, uh, ¿Por qué? Porque es difícil tener el desayuno incluido como un... Una, un desayuno en forma de buffet es, es difícil. Eh, ah, si, eh, si el desayuno eh, está servido a la mesa, no hay ningún problema. Pero esta cosa de buffet, sí, con la, las personas pueden escoger y recoger una o tomar una cosa muy rápidamente. Uh, va a ser más difícil. Otra, otro cambio. Another change. <ríe> Exacto. Ok. Ah, ¿Tienes más, Nora, o no? I just had a question. The first sentence I was doing, I was trying to get across that we like to look for hotels where we can get membership reward points. So did Ooh. that come off correctly on that first one? Compensa, sí. Uh, uh, you may hear them use uh, points. I think that whole thing of puntos mm-hmm. is kind of used. Um, <clears throat> ¿Cómo se recompensa? 
uh, con, con la tarjeta, ¿no? A veces. Uh, sí, es lógico, sí. Queremos, nos gusta, uh, tienen, tienen, tienen puntos. Uh, sí. Recompensa, that works. Bien. Ok. Excelente, excelente. Uh, voy a voy a mostrarles. I'm going to show you uh, one extra thing. We're going to distinguish one extra thing. We kind of went over this very, very quickly. Oh, Linda, I, I assume you're not sharing. Sí, correcto o no? Okay. I'm going to take that as a no. Okay. Uh, bien. Um, I am going to show you a um, couple of things with this quiero un quisiera because it's important. And we won't really get as much into this verb uh, until summer. But here is the form of querer. Y es importante. This is an important verb. This is one of the verbs that they, uh, um, it's one of the, I would say like 10 biggies. If you were to pick 10 verbs that people need to use a lot when they communicate with people, this is one of the, definitely on the top 10 list, querer. But uh, querer is a highly irregular verb and it is what we call a, Sadly, a stem changing verb. Uh, a stem changing verb. Whoa, oh, I thought I was gonna be able to use my pointer, but I cannot, I have to get better at that. Okay. Um, that's why I've got that highlighted. It's what they call a stem change. And all that really means, it's a fancy word. You don't need to know what it means till summertime, then it will become important. This E, this letter, this first E, not the E end of E-R in querer, but the first E. That is part of what is called the stem. Everything that's not the E-R at the end, or the A-R at the end, or the I-R at the end, everything that comes in front of the E-R, A-R, I-R is called the stem. It's like the big main body part of the verb. And a stem changing verb means that something happens to the vowel right there. Something happens, to, whoops, to, we don't want to underline the whole thing. Something happens to the E in there. Okay, querer, so this E right here that is highlighted in yellow. A stem changing verb means that that vowel splits off and it changes in many, but not 100%, but most of the forms into uh, like a different vowel altogether or a double vowel. Okay, so querer means to want, and the forms it takes if you're just expressing that you want something are, are these forms. It won't be quero, it'll be quiero, ie, ie. That e changes into an ie. Quiero. And really, uh, what you know there is that the Q-U, the U, is one of those unusual times when we don't pronounce the U. It's not cu i ero, it's quiero. So it's key, like the key for your car. Quiero. Quiero, quieres, quiere. And that'll be the formal, the form for el or ella or usted. So when you're talking, to um, you know, to somebody using the formal form, it's the quiere form. Quieren, the plural form, also gets a stem change, and the two that don't get a stem change that go back to the original Q U E without that letter I stuck in there are the nosotros and vosotros forms. And of course, because in Latin America we don't use the vosotros forms, queréis, the only one you really need to know is queremos. Not queremos, but queremos, quer. Queremos like querer, queremos, okay? But everything else is gonna get the ki, ki, ki form, quiero. Quiero, quieres, quiere, quieren. I want, you, friendly, want, 
you formal or he, she wants, they want, quieren. Okay. Um, this sound, if you're having an exchange with somebody, this may sound a little forceful, unless you're in like a fast food situation. Okay. Um, oops. Uh, that is why we've got this specialized form of querer, the more polite. And this is, I will tell you, super polite. So if you're in a long line waiting for fast food, they may not want you getting into this all polite form. <laughs> you know, you're ordering a bunch of drinks and it's a hot day and there are a whole bunch of people in line. You don't worry about like, in that situation, this quiero thing is good. I want this because I'm gonna, I want it and I want to get out and people know that. But if you're at a sit down dinner or if you're at a hotel desk, as you saw in the video, this quisiera makes you sound like a way much nicer person than the average gringo walking into a place, okay? You will not have the big gringo thing stamped all over your head if you use this word quisiera. This is when you're making a request to a waiter, a receptionist, a concierge, uh, somebody care who might be carrying your bags. Maybe you've got a lot, a lot of luggage if you're one of those people who's willing to pay the fees for extra luggage, yeah. Um, this quisiera words becomes important. Uh, quisiera, quisieras, a tu form, and quisiera. You'll notice the yo form and the el, ella, usted form are exactly the same. So sometimes, depending on the context, they may use the pronoun yo quisiera. You might. You might not because, you know, in context, you're ordering something off of a menu or you walk up to the receptionist's desk. If you say, uh, quisiera, uh, quisiera reservar, quisiera reservar, they know you're saying, I want, I would like to reserve. And, and this, uh, you know, quisiéramos, we would like, quisieran. And this, instead of just, I want, I want, I want, sounds more formal because it means, I would like or I would want this thing. And in English, we don't ever really say I would want, but it's the polite way to say I would like. Instead of gustar, you use this to say I would like. Because even though you really mean I would like, you're indicating what you want to order, what you want to reserve in a room. Quisiera. Quisiera. Uh, quisiera una habitación doble. Quisiera una habitación doble. I would like a double room. Okay. Uh, so if you're speaking to somebody back and forth in an exchange, the quisiera is way more polite than this quiero. But the quiero is very direct for a short, quick situation. Okay. Bien. Okay, this quisiera uh, can be used plus a thing, meaning the thing that you would like. It can be used as quisiera plus infinitive for something you would like to do. So I'm gonna show you some examples of how that can match up. Uh, quisiera una cerveza, por favor. I would like a beer. If you want a glass of beer. Quisiera un vino tinto. I would like a red wine. Uh, still put the por favor on because that please is always great. You always sound like a, a nice person when you do that. Uh, quisiéramos el menú del día. We would like the daily menu. A lot of times there's a special of the day, you know, something that's offered as a package meal, meaning you get a, a single drink an entree, or excuse me, maybe an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert, and all that stuff is pulled into one. And that's often called the menu del día. 
Um, so, quisiéramos. Quisiéramos el menú del día. Quisiera una cerveza. I'm pairing that with the thing I would like or the thing that we would like. Qui ah, we might pair it up with an infinitive for something you would like to do. And that second thing, the thing that you would like to do stays an infinitive. It doesn't get conjugate, conjugated. Uh, quisiera ver el menú. Quisiera ver, quisiera ver. I would like to see. Quisiera ver, quisiera ver el menú. Uh, uh, quisieran de ver algo. They may ask you this way. Oh, the waiter or waitress may ask you this way. You're sitting there with a companion or with many people. I put it in plural because if you're with somebody, this is how it'll sound in the plural. And the waiter or waitress will ask, quisieran de ver algo. And that means there, it's an implied ustedes. They may not say the word ustedes because they're looking at you. They assume you know, they mean ustedes. Quisieran beber algo, instead of quisieran ustedes beber algo. Quisieran beber algo, would you like to drink something? Quisieran tomar algo, same thing. Quisieran tomar, would you like to drink something? Because tomar, remember, is that nice all purpose. Tomar can mean eat or drink. And you know, usually they do ask you what you want to drink first. So it might be quisieran beber algo if it's later in the day and they think you want al alcohol, right? Quisieran tomar algo, would you like to drink something? That'll usually be the first question before what you want to e eat, what you want to drink along with your menu. So quisiera with a verb or quisiera with a thing, you may see. Uh, another verb, that we'll get into next time is going to be this verb, uh, poder. Poder means can. Uh, ooh, and I got to double check my second screen. Okay, yeah. Uh, poder means can. It also has a stem change. Instead of an IE like querer, it gets a UE. And this is something that we often use when we ask. Uh, instead of, I would like to, so if you want to refer to what you can have or what you can do, it's a common verb. And so I'm going to just do a baby introduction to that, but we'll do this more uh, come summer and then definitely into fall, because this takes a lot of practice. This again, poder, like querer, is like on the top 10 list of verbs that people want to be able to use. Poder means to can, uh, can or be able to. Uh, puedo, I can or I am able to. Puedes, you can or you are able to. Puede, the formal, right, usted or the LEA form, puede. Podemos does not get the stem change. It goes back to the P-O-D of poder. Oh, and podéis, perdón, wow, un error. Ay, a ver, podéis, the vosotros form. I was thinking double nosotros. Podéis, also the vosotros form, which they only use in Spain, does not get the, the stem change. But then that plural form for ellas or ellas or ustedes does get that U-E. Pueden, okay? So, like querer, poder is often used in travel settings when you want to talk about what you can or asking about what you can do. Um, like, may I come in? Puedo entrar. You know, you walk up to a shop, you're not quite sure if they're open yet, it's kind of close to that opening time. Puedo entrar. Uh, Puedo preguntar, may I ask? Uh, puedo, puedo pedir, may I order something? Okay, and again, poder can be used uh, plus an infinitive. And it can be used when you're asking for service, especially in a, a restaurant. So, me puede traer. Can you bring to me? And the me means to me. 
And the puede means you're asking in an usted form. Me puede traer un vaso de tinto. Can you bring me a glass of red wine? Me puede traer una cerveza. Can you bring me a beer? Me puede traer un té helado. Can you bring me an iced tea? Me puede traer un vaso de agua. Can you bring me a glass of water? Me puede traer la cuenta. Can you bring me that? Well, I'm not going to put in receipt, the bill, because really this is more for the bill, la cuenta. The bill, uh, whether that bill is for the hotel or for, you know, uh, la cuenta, usually for your table when you're, um, uh, you know, done with your meal. Me puede traer la cuenta. Can you bring me the bill? And you will generally have to ask for a bill in a lot of uh, countries that speak Spanish because they will assume that you're going to linger a bit over a meal. And generally the, the inclination is to let you chit chat a little bit after you've finished eating. So they often, unless it's like super busy, they're not gonna rush you out by just bringing the bill. You often have to ask for it. Me puede traer la cuenta. You can, of course, always shorten that to la cuenta, por favor. And when you shorten it to la cuenta, por favor, you do this, la cuenta, por favor. You write, you write in the air, la cuenta, por favor. So, you know, again, this is a circumlocution. You forget all that, those verbs, la cuenta, por favor. Sometimes if you just, they see you across the room doing that, they'll know la cuenta. I mean, that's the signal, that, that's the body language signal that is commonly used. Okay, uh, so back to this, see, sí. uh, puedo pagar, puedo pagar, can I pay? Puedo pagar con tarjeta, can I pay with credit card? Or maybe if you've got your debit card, whichever card it is, right? Puedo pagar con tarjeta. Puedo pagar con efectivo. Con efectivo with cash, right? Or en efectivo. Uh, podemos reservar una habitación. Can we reserve a room? Can we reserve a room? Bien. Okay. So this for poder is another important one. And one of our, our roadmap things for summer will be like, here are 10 verbs we need to know for daily survival when, when traveling. That's gonna be one of the things. And poder is gonna be on that list. Uh, yay. Okay. Uh, And there is a super polite, but we're not going to go over that because that's going to be a longer theme <laughs> for another day. A un tema de otro día, a theme of another day. ¿Tienen preguntas antes de terminar la clase hoy? ¿Hay preguntas o no? Nada. Ok, bien. Uh, vamos a terminar la clase para hoy. La semana que viene no hay clase. No class next week, okay? Uh, I'm going to do the grand plan. Eh, eh, vamos a empezar con las clases de verano. Las clases de verano, summer classes, sí. El 22, el 22, el lunes, el 22 de junio. So we'll start up same time a las nueve y media. Uh, el lunes, como siempre, like always, Monday, 22nd. Um, do have your, uh, your, that grammar textbook handy when we start up. I am not going to give a homework kind of thing to do. Um, you know, if you feel ambitious, it's always good doing a little bit 
often rather than a whole big chunk at once. So if you want to do anything in between, I would say keep going with Duolingo. Don't hit the book so hard, but maybe hit Duolingo a bit. Um, or, you know, review any of the videos we've done this session. Um, and uh, that'll be good just to keep you from feeling a little bit rusty in that week in between. Uh, but Duolingo is always a great thing to uh, keep you going. Está bien. Uh, vamos a ver, entonces, vamos a practicar con más vocabulario, con más verbos, cuando... Cuando empezamos el 22 de junio. ¿Verdad? Bien. Ok. Nos vemos pronto. We'll see you guys soon. Muchísimas, gracias. muchísimas gracias. 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 Y gracias. Que, que tengan buena semana. Have a good week. Que tengan dos semanas buenas. Have good, two good weeks. <laughs> y nos vemos el lunes el 22. ¿Sí? Thank ah, you so much. Adiós. Ah, hasta okay. luego. De nada, de nada. Es un placer. It is a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Es un placer. Adiós. Adiós.